it breaks my heart that I don't get to plan a wedding. It breaks my heart that I don't have a career right now. I don't know when I'll ever have a career again. I essentially just channeled all my energy into making sure my mom had everything she needed. And the reality is we don't know how much longer my mom's going to be around. I help her clean herself, soap, get the toothbrush. Literally, part of my daily routine was when she passes motion, I take a peek because I need to know whether or not there is blood in her stool. For some reason, I'm not disgusted by it. I don't even know why. I think because I look at it from a project management perspective, which is what I used to do. When my mom started getting sick and I said, oh, I've stopped working because I'm going to be my mom's primary caregiver. I always get the question, why don't you just get a maid? I don't see how I am expected to just hand it over to the hands of someone she does not know personally in such a private and almost to a certain extent invasive manner on a daily basis. I wonder. Tissue. I want to cut my hair. Yeah, okay. We'll cut your hair next week, okay? Uh, uh, it's the day I didn't take the sweet. Okay, tomorrow, uh, later, okay? After your blood test, you can take the sweet. Alright? Boleh tak? You take your medicine first, and then after that, you can makan and top out your water, alright? Loneliness, it's the hardest part. The problem of being a caregiver is that you really struggle to find time for yourself. You start to lose your sense of self-identity. So you can be in a room full of people, but you still feel very lonely. One of the things that I think is with anyone caring for an elderly loved one is you naturally wonder how long we have them for. The reality is you never know. And that's why my current motto is literally one day at a time. Which also means I don't know how long my personal life will be on hold. I would want to plan my own wedding, but that's just not something I have the space for in my life right now. I have friends who are already married now, who have already gotten their first child, who have already bought their first home. I'm going to be 40 in two years' time, and I don't have any of that. We're not going to kill ourselves trying to plan the wedding if we don't have the right mental headspace for it. Right now, the engagement ring is a promise that we will get married and we'll just see when we can get married. Having a partner who has a lot on his plate, I feel guilty because I worry about not being entirely present for Wayne. And I don't think it's fair to ask of anyone. So are you ready for me to take out your gift? Whoa. <laughs> as much as I don't want to lose him, I also don't want to hold him back from any other version of happiness he might be able to have. Every four to six weeks, we are at some sort of uh, doctor's appointment. It can be her hematologist, her cardiologist, her neurologist. 
She has a doctor for her arthritis, she has a podiatrist, she has an eye doctor. How long will it get like this? What do you mean? Myself. How long I will? Oh, mommy, why? What's wrong? What's wrong? I want to be okay. Oh, mommy, slowly, right? I didn't tell you. Huh? What? I didn't make you suffer. Ma, it's okay. Alright? Okay? But you don't have to be sad, okay? Because all of us still love you, right? I love you, love. Okay, we love you, okay? We need to cry, okay? You okay? Alright, I'm gonna get ready. you today? My sister had smacked another patient with her slipper. The doctors have told her, you need to show us that you are able to control your emotions and only then would you be considered suitable for discharge. So, yes, so you need to control your anger. Uh, Understand? How are you today? Do you feel anything? Like want to beat people or what? No, I want to scream, shout, and cry. Uh. Cry is okay. As a result of caregiver burnout, I myself was diagnosed with depression in 2016. I am currently trying to navigate my own depression and going to therapy and being on medication. If mom were to pass away tomorrow, I don't know what would happen with my career. How do I restart that? The dementia is a lot more progressed now and she has moments where she does not recall timeline she does not recall where she lives, forgets names. My mother is nowhere near as strong and as active and as chatty as she was before. Um, it's scary, um, which is also why I made the decision with my siblings and tell my sister's doctors in IMH to discharge her and we will care for my sister at home. Because what's more important to us is that my sister spends time with my mom while she can. What time is office? 9, 9 a.m. exactly. So the silver lining from this experience of being a caregiver to my mom is the significantly improved relationship with my siblings. You bought for her roti, is it? Yeah, I bought for her roti. Okay, so you want the roti? Seeing the four of us uh, band together as a team, I'm really grateful to my siblings. We started to have uh, friends and um, family that would reach out and check in on us. Even strangers kind of like send me direct messages and telling me, hey, you know, I actually am going through this. I'm sorry that this sounds cliche, but the reality is realizing that you are not alone makes a huge difference. I'm not saying it takes your problems away immediately, but knowing that there are people who stand in solidarity with you um, is very, very powerful. So I know Wayne and I will be together, but I don't know when we're getting married, even till now. 
So thinking back on my mental health condition, you know, the first two years of taking care of my mom and when we were filming that documentary, I would say on a scale of one to ten, I was hovering at a four. You start to lose your sense of self-identity. So you can be in a room full of people, but you still feel very lonely. Um, but after the support groups that I attended and surprisingly being a part of the documentary in itself and talking about it was part of healing in itself. Yeah, so my mental health is definitely an 8 now. Have you given any thought to your future? Or how your life will change when you're younger? Um, after mom, uh, I want to continue to be able to care for my sister because I love her <laughs> and because I am battling depression and my sister has had a lifetime of you know navigating her mental health or uh, condition in Singapore I would like to be able to go into mental health space um, or healthcare sector yeah, and I hope that if anybody else out there is watching this and you're caring for a loved one and you're too scared or you don't know where to start, always remember that um, you can ask for help. I know that it can be scary, but there is help available and there are resources. And if you need somebody to help you navigate those resources, there are support groups available for that as well. So please do reach out. Pero din nila na pinalabas, dun din ako. Na training. Nisa ni luto sa nagum pugut ng holo di ko din gagawe na kung papatan nila. Di ko nga alam. Nung magkawayaw sa amin, di ko nga alam. Magkapagalan pa ako. 